Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you for joining us. Today we are in Indiana. We're at Wayne Township Fire Department and they have a pretty cool station. Let's go take a look. So this is Wayne Township Fire Department. It's a suburb of Indianapolis in Indiana. We're gonna be meeting up with their chief here. This is uh, Chief Courtney Rice. He's also their PIO. So he's gonna walk us through this station and give us a real good tour. This station was finished up in 2012 era. So it's fairly new, very clean, a lot of cool features. Let's go take a look. Hey Chief, nice to meet you finally. Nice to meet you. Thanks for inviting us out here. Uh, anytime. So really quick, uh, you know, what do you have in this building? So this building, uh, you already mentioned, was built in 2012. Um, it houses the Wayne Township Government Center and Wayne Township Fire Department Station 82, which is our kind of our, our, tier, our top tier fire station. We're running an engine, a ladder, a TSU for our uh, specialized rescue, an ALS ambulance, and the shift commander are all running out of this five bay firehouse. In addition to the small claims court, the trustee's office, poor relief, and things like that are all run out of the this side building here, okay. uh, which is basically all of our government offices. Very cool. Having both on the same campus is pretty cool. Yes, yes Let's it go is. Let's take a look what you have inside. All right. Nice for you here, nice and cool. Got yeah, nice heat. and cool. So uh, the way this station and building is set up, uh, we got our fire bays out here, uh, which are completely separated from our living quarters. And then this whole side of the first floor is basically dedicated to the trustee's office. So we keep a couple of bathrooms and things, but most of this is just a hallway to get to the back parking lot where our firefighters park. Uh, the rest of it is dedicated to administrative offices for the government center. Okay, that so, makes sense. Uh, so let's move on upstairs. You can see the, the living area. Okay. Making our way upstairs, you know, you talked about the administrative side of your, your, your complex here. It's kind of cool to see that you have the building attached. Many times we separate those two administrators. How supportive is your guy? Right now we have uh, one of the most supportive trustees that we've ever had. This station was the beginning of that concept where uh, the governing body took an interest in what was happening at the fire station. So having this station uh, where we're completely separate from the fire trucks right now. There is nothing from the bay that's going to get up into the firehouse, which is really important for the health and safety of our firefighters. Uh, going from the old single bunk room, bunks lined along the wall, everybody sleeping together and snoring and everything else, that's, those days are gone. We'll, I'll show you here in a minute how each guy has his own place now. Um, wow. And it's very quiet and, and you, know, you can get good rest and you have a place to study and you have a place to kind of be yourself. Right. right. Uh, so yeah, and they've just been 100% behind firefighters. Our pension, benefits, everything are just like top tier. That's, that's awesome. Which is, yeah, which is incredible. Yeah, uh, yeah we, I don't think any guy on the, on the job here can say anything about like what he gets. Right. So. <laughs> so we're making it up to the second floor. Up here, you know, you, it's got you some of your pictures, some of your old ladders, kind of to make it home we feel. Right. Off to our left, what do we have here? This is our uh, the station's training room. We actually bring a lot of guys in from other stations. Like we kind of like to centralize our, our trainings now that COVID restrictions are being lifted. So we get the guys back together again. It was a rough year and a half. I mean, these, these guys are used to interacting all day long, 24 hours a day. Right. And at one time we had the engine sitting at a table and eating, and we had the ladder sitting at another table on the other side of the room and eating, and they weren't supposed to interact with each other because we were just like, it's hard to control yeah. uh, during, it's hard to control everything during a pandemic. Changing so, that kind of mentality is very difficult. For oh fire. yeah, yeah, it, it was can, incredible. It could be de detrimental to fire. Yeah, I, yeah actually, uh, it, the bond between these guys has been has just always been there. Uh, so they were able to, to maintain it. You know, th from your phone, you can throw videos up at that TV and the guys can see it and things like that. That's, I mean, that's important to be able to, to be mobile. Firehouses are not, mobile things. Uh, earlier uh, you saw like the station gets a lot of runs. Right. They're always on the move. So being able to ha have them get access to it from anywhere is important. Right. So before we continue on, do us a favor, hit subscribe, hit that notification because we're trying to hit that 50,000 mark in just a couple of months. All right, as we make down the hallway, it splits into two different ways. Which way do you want to go? Uh, we're going to we're going to head to the to the right here. So uh, what we are in the ladder hallway. So all of the ladder guys kind of sleep in the same hallway so everybody can look to make sure everybody gets up when that run happens. Uh, and like I talked about earlier, so we have every guy has his own bunk okay. and the bunks are actually assigned to one guy per each shift. So you can see everybody's got their name on it. So your A, B and C platoons. A, a, B and C. So every guy's on 24 hours and he's off for 48. And then he has a place to store all of his uniforms. He has a place to store all of his bedding 
and he has a place to study, he has a place to watch TV, and a place to sleep. Uh, Wayne Township does not like to see our guys taking uniforms home, especially with firefighters that are frontline firefighters. We want the uniforms kept here, we want them washed here, and we, want them, we don't want them to take any of that stuff home. When a guy leaves to go home in the morning to his kids and his wife, He's half, half my closet would be empty. <laughs> you know exactly, where I yeah. come from. Yeah. You know, I you know I got a, a wall of blue. So I'm admin, I'm an administrative employee. So I do get dressed at home, and I and so I, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's pretty rough when half of your closet is dark blue okay. and, and and black shoes. You know, and everybody's just like, that's yeah, my favorite color. <laughs> So walking down here, you have the four different bunks because you said four per. Yeah, truck. well, so well, there's there's five guys assigned to the truck. Okay. But one guy is typically always on Kelly Day. Okay. So on Kelly Day here. What uh, does Kelly Day mean for those that don't aren't in the fire service? So maybe watching uh, this. so, fire the fire service schedule naturally has overtime built into it. Okay. Uh, you have two weeks where you work 48 hours. You have one week where you work 72. Okay. Uh, so a Kelly Day eliminates that overtime. So every one out of all those seven days, you're off with pay. Okay. Because you're off with pay, you have to work 24 hours of overtime before you can even be at the overtime rate. Gotcha. So now we've eliminated that overtime expense and the guys get an extra day off. Okay. You know, So that's a five day period every three weeks. Right. You got five days off to be with family, go to kids football games and hockey games and, right. and things like that and just to be normal it's and kind of, kind of get some rest. Yeah, I got into a rotation of seven on, seven off. That wasn't too bad, yeah. but having a Kelly day and making an extended period of time, yeah. I can get my projects done. Yeah. So behind you, you have some piece of technology here that we haven't seen yet. This is something yeah. that was built in, very purposeful, right? Yes, yes. This is the locution system. It, uh, it ties into our dispatch system and every guy can turn on or turn off whatever parts of the alerting system that he wants to or does not want to hear. So it, just by touching his bunk, it brings up what's ringing in his. So he can, so the, for example, this guy is, this is a medic bunk. So medic 82, which is our medic truck, the phone page. So if somebody on, on the intercom wants to say something, they're going to hear that in there. And if somebody rings the doorbell, they're going to hear the doorbell ring, but they don't hear the battalion, the boats, uh, the ladder truck, the engine, any of that other stuff. That stuff is completely uh, occluded from that, from that bunk. So okay. they can actually get some sleep. If that, you know, if they're not on a run, they're going to get some sleep, and okay. they're not going to hear all the other stuff that's going on okay. because it's it's nonstop. That's that's pretty cool to have that you can change it back and forth for each yeah. bunk. Because you know, as I was a younger guy, I was you know you would consider me a whacker. I like to have my scanner on all the time, right. listen to everything that's going on. I could come in and say, I want to listen to everybody tonight, yep. and listen to all what's yep. going on, and it'll ring all night long. Or I could say, you know what, I'm done for the day. I'm just going to turn those guys off and only do me. Yep, we have. Uh, red lights instead of white, so yeah. they're not shocking guys. Um, we have a, the alert actually increases in volume as it, uh, and within about four seconds, it goes from low to full right. volume to wake the guys up, but wake them up at a little bit better pace, sure. little little easier on hearts. Right. We found out that's right. uh, and that's something that you worked with the architectural firm to help yeah. you do that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, the, the the architectural firm was really great when when the the trustee and the administrative staff said, "This is what we want. We want we want to start." incorporate in all of these um, these safety measures in and we want our guys to we, we, we want our guys to be as healthy as possible and we don't want the firehouse to be a detriment right. this station used to be a Kroger's grocery store and it was turned okay. into a fire station and everything was open right everything so right. you could literally like stand behind the fire engine and you could see the bunk rooms you know it was that it was that kind of thing okay uh, so it was like a big communal like always the guys were together they were right. always talking and laughing and cutting up and things like that and taking runs you you could hear the truck start every single run. Yeah. So, uh, and, and everybody woke up for every single run. Okay. So. But with a, a good architectural firm to help you do these kind of things, you yeah. know, make it, you build into the design right from the get-go. Right. And didn't... there's so many regulations. They're changing every single year. I, I get the emails all the time, but station design conference this year, station design conference this year, because the NFP is constantly working to make it safer. Right. You know? Right. And, you know, when I was doing the walk around earlier, we talked about, you know, the separate rooms that now for the NFPA regulations, I think 2018 says you have to have your gear in a separate room with vents and all kinds of stuff. Right. This one was built before those regulations. Right. But you did separate it and stuff we, like that. Yeah, we did. Uh, we And we've always wanted and always kept kind of a gear room. We always wanted our stuff away from everything else. And our administrative staff uh, at headquarters and the trustee 
they're behind it 100. percent They're like, you know, whatever it takes to make this place safe, that's what we want to do. Right, so they're, right. they're they're not going to cut. And having price. a firm that knows those kind of regulations. Yeah, Access was great to work with. This this building is uh, is a beacon in this neighborhood. Uh, people know this building. They right. know they know where it's at. They know what it looks like. And and to have that have Access be able to like weed through those regulations and weed through the requirements and build this. Yeah, as we were driving in, you know, unfortunately you guys as viewers didn't see us driving up to this. You know, we're not from this area, we're from Pennsylvania area. We're right. coming to Indiana. I'm driving down the road, I'm like, okay, where's this firehouse? I'm always looking for this little small thing out in the back or a small barn. I saw it a half mile down the road. I'm like, yeah. there it is, yeah. you know, and, and you know, it's very prominent in this area. Yeah. Pretty cool to see. You know, we saw the balcony right from the get-go. We saw the big bay doors, which you guys will see in just a little bit. Uh, and that you have an awesome place. So now we're in the uh, second floor. This is the common area. Yeah. This was specifically built to look like this. Why? Fire stations only work if everybody works together well. These guys have to trust each other. They have to live with each other. The best crews are the ones that are super, super tight. Uh, that's something that the guys were afraid they were gonna lose from that old fire station. That old fire station, everybody was together all the time. You knew everything about everybody 24 hours a day. And they wanted that in this firehouse. They wanted that area where everybody could be together. And meal times are that's we solve all the world's problems every day <laughs> right. at meal time. So yeah, so this station, obviously I said uh, 13 guys are here minimum every day. Okay. So we have four guys on each rig, we have two guys on the medic truck, two guys on the battalion, and we have a guy on the TSU who's backing everybody up. So so just looking here, you have A, B, and C platoon fridges, so yep. you don't have to worry about that. Right. You have industrial size appliances for, yeah. your, for your dishwashers yep. and your ovens and your sinks and that yep. kind of stuff. Because you're making meals for 13 people on a regular basis. Yep. You know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know, well, you know. a lunch and dinner, breakfast is kind of on your own, but everybody's always making breakfast. You know, it's right. a, it might, you're making it on your own, we're not just not making sure. a big meal. Sure. Except on Sundays, Sunday's brunch day. Okay. So. Plenty of cabinets up here that looks oh, yeah. really nice. You got your pantry closets. Yeah. Uh, everything the coffee that area is. because firehouses run on coffee, coffee <laughs> 24 hours a day. So yeah. there's always hot yeah. coffee on. Uh, it looks like you got like a little bar area here or, uh, you know. Yeah, this is kind of, this is kind of the breakfast area. These are where the stories of what happened yesterday on this run. Uh, this is what happened with the ladder. Uh, we, we had a problem with it or whatever. Okay. And then the big table is lunch and dinners. This is where everybody sits. We just, this is a brand new table. Wow. Uh, we, we just added the TSU, it just came here. So uh, there was, this was a 12 seat table. Okay. Uh, and we got a 13th guy. So they put him over all by himself. <laughs> the rookie uh, goes yeah, over as, the Yeah, as the, as the rookie. Uh, and the, the captain said, we got to build a new table. Uh, so okay. he, we, they just took uh, possession of this uh, within the last uh, couple of months. So they're really proud of it. A lot of our uh, station cribs that we've done already, they've had these fire tables. Um, um, some of them build themselves, some of them, you know, from your guys inside. Yeah. Do you send this out? Did you guys do this? How do you? Uh, yeah, the, uh, there's a guy from uh, one of the other inner city departments here who, who builds tables. And uh, right. they, they contracted with him and sent him the digital copies of all the, the, pa the, the patches right. and everything else. And this is what they got. So they did a, did a really great job. Yeah. 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 Over here is just kind of another little sitting area with your television. Yeah. You have an awesome. Yeah, that patio? About, what do you call it? Yeah, uh, it's the balcony. Uh, yeah, uh, in the summertime, they'll usually eat outside, uh, unless it's super 90 degree weather, which we've had here a lot of recently. Right. Uh, you're, you're smoking or barbecuing out here. Let's step out and see what see what yeah. we can see. Absolutely. So you got your barbecue out here, and you get a very good view. Yeah. If I'm looking down there, correct me if I'm wrong, that's Indianapolis, that's yeah. downtown. Yeah, you can just barely see it today. Unfortunately, it's an overcast day, but you can actually see downtown. Indianapolis kind of is in a bowl and we're on the outer edge of it. So we get a great shot of what, anything that's going on downtown, any air shows, uh, anything like that. We, we've got first first-hand view right here. Okay. So it's and the airport's awesome. not too far from here, so yeah. they're going right over you. Yeah, we're we're actually in the final approach uh, line of Indianapolis International Airport, so it's like nonstop uh, airplanes over here. It's really cool that you can't hear them inside. All right. Uh, but yeah, we're there's hundreds of planes a day with the FedEx and everybody else who okay. comes into Indy. It's it's a busy airport. This is uh, you know awesome. You get to see your community. You get to see yeah. everything outside, yeah. uh, and people can see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, and and. Kids come by and they use the they use the basketball goal. Most of these guys know anybody who's around here. There's a, a lady on a motorized wheelchair. She comes by every day in the morning, and the guys know know that she's coming. Right, you know? right. Uh, and if they don't see her, there's there might be a problem. <laughs> right. You know. So yeah. That, yeah so uh, you know, you got to keep an eye on your community and and. Uh, 
and they, they do a good job here. Okay. Now, you built a lot of technology into this. Over here, there's a, a screen up on the wall. Can you explain yeah. to me what's going on here? It's made by a company called First Arriving. We call it the Wonder Board. Uh, the Wonder Board is controlled. We control all the data that you see coming up here. So, uh, for example, this the screen just changed. Here's a, a COVID update. We added this COVID screen when the, when the pandemic hit. Uh, we also have employee news. We just released new versions of the rules and regulations and the SOG. So we want the guys to know that they're out there. Okay. They can get them on the website. Uh, the battalion chief will put his plan of the day out. The safety chief will put out anything, any safety concerns. If there's a temperature problem or if there's a weather issue or anything like that, we get all that up there. Uh, there's Facebook feed, Twitter feed. There's uh, news for, about buildings that might have uh, sprinkler problems or hydrant outages or road closures. All that stuff's up here all 24 hours a day. It's just constantly cycling about every 30 seconds to a minute. And it's not just for this station, it's for all your stations. Yeah, all the stations are all linked together and I and I can change these on, from my phone. Okay. I can literally like see a, a road closure, I can add that to the list and automatically the guys come up. And I saw earlier that you had Heroes Next Door with taping today, so. That yes, was cool yeah, to yeah. And, and every time there's a run, it'll actually pop up a map and show the guys how to get there. So it, it, the, the map will show up and show them the quickest way based on Google Maps. Okay. And, and everything, it'll show them like the best way to get to where they're going. Okay. So, Over in the corner, this little uh, feed here, what is this? Yeah, little? so this is also tied into that locution system I told you about. Okay. So every truck is, is shown on here. Uh, so starting at this next one. So Medic 82 is on a run, engine, ladder, and battalion chief, okay. the boats, and the TSU. So if they're green, they're in service and ready to take a run. Okay. If they're red, they're out of service for either a run or training. Okay. And if they're orange, they're getting ready to be dispatched. Okay. So, so the guys will watch up and pop up and see, the, oh, their their truck just went orange. It's time time to get yourself ready right. and get ready to go downstairs. Put a lid on your dinner. <laughs> yeah, put a lid on dinner and take a quick drink of water and start heading that right. way and, and get ready to take a run. Right. And those are located throughout the house. Yeah, there's about 11 or 12 of them in this firehouse. So pretty much anywhere you go, you should be able to see one of those boards. There's one in the in the weight room. There's one in, in every hallway. Okay. There's The battalion chief has one in his office downstairs. Yeah, so. nice, easy, quick way to know Exactly, yeah. The, and, and that lets them know Sometimes guys forget to push the in-service button, especially you know if you're busy, you jump in the truck and you're like, why haven't we gotten a run? And you realize, oh, I forgot to push the in-service button. Okay. <laughs> Behind us is a weight room. Obviously yes. you can see this. Yeah, yes. we're gonna step inside and take a look yeah. at this real quick. You have the state-of-the-art workout room here. Can you explain to me everything that you have in here? Or? Firefighter fitness is, I mean, that's our, gotta be our top tier concern. Um, all, all of our firefighters are required to un undergo a physical examination a work performance evaluation of, of work-based tasks that has to be completed in a certain amount of time while, on, while wearing air and without emptying the bottle. And then they also have to do a, uh, a VO2 max test. So we make sure their, their physical conditioning is at its peak. Uh, and this is the best place to do it. These guys, a lot of these guys, this is their gym. Right. Uh, they're, they're working out, they're, they're coming in early in the morning or they're doing a workout with their crew. And then tomorrow morning, some of these guys are gonna be in here at five o'clock in the morning getting another workout in, you don't need a gym, you don't need a gym membership if you're working out two out of three days. You're basically hitting everything that you can. So right, right. Uh, there's a big focus on uh, cardio, obviously. We, we, gotta, we gotta be on the top tier physical condition as far as like how long we can endure, but you guys are also doing weightlifting and they're trying to you know get in the best shape they can. Right, and this, so you got everything here. You have yeah. some free weights, you have bench pressing, you have sled machines, row machines, treadmills, you name it, you got it here. This is a, basically yeah. an LA fitness in your own place. Yeah, and this station is, is well known for the fact that uh, um, pretty much without a doubt, everybody here is, this is one of their, their favorite rooms. You right. know, everybody works out every day. Uh, the captain uh, who runs this firehouse is like, you know, if, if somebody says, oh, I just saw this, this thing, I think we should try it out. He'll take a look at it. If, it's, if he can squeeze it into the budget, He's going to get it. Okay. You know, he, he wants every he wants his guys to be in the best shape that they can possibly be, and the and the department is feels the same way. You know, we're all like, you guys got to you guys got to make it to retirement, and you got to live past retirement. Right. You got to be able to enjoy your pension. You got to be able to enjoy that time with your family when you're not getting up and sure. and you're sleeping again and sure. things like that. So now you mentioned to me when we were doing our first walk around that you have a health fitness program or you own your own clinic kind of thing, is that? Yeah, so we, uh, the department has uh, an employee clinic for our, all of our employees and their families. So uh, we have a nurse practitioner uh, on staff every day. 
Uh, they, they handle our physicals and they do and not only that but then they handle just the general health of firemen uh, and their family so if your kid needs shots for school call them up they'll get through shot, shot squared away if you're on a uh, on a maintenance medication uh, we have, actually have a formulary and they stock everything so you can just call them up and say hey I need my next three month supply you just walk while you're on duty, you can just literally pull up, jump out, go in, pick up your medicine, and go back to the firehouse. Right. Uh, and the fact that it's actually lowered our cost because we're self-insured. So we're uh, we're cutting our insurance costs because all of our guys are getting their, their physical, their well-being from that clinic. Right. And, and it's cheaper for us to do that than it is to have them go to this hospital or that doctor or this doctor. Right. Now, if you do need a specialist, they're going to get you into a specialist right away. I've, I've used them myself. You go in there and, talk, and within 10 or 15 minutes, they're like, hang on a minute, let me see if I can get you in somewhere. And they'll come back and say, uh, they're going to call you in, in the next hour and get you scheduled for your appointment. And you didn't have to do any work. That's awesome. Super yeah, nice, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, having, having that clinic. Uh, and that's a, kind of the trend now is, is, uh, fire, is fire departments are getting a clinic and helping reduce that cost because everybody's going to the same spot. and. It's cheaper for a, for, a, for a department to employ a doctor than it is to pay all of those doctors. Right, right. So yeah. So, it's, so having a room like this is going to definitely help in that. We have another room across the hall here uh, <laughs> that uh, yes, yes, they <laughs> we're going to take a look at real quick. So across the hall, you have another room that kind of goes in line with health and fitness. Exactly. Yeah. So this is our... This is the uh, TV room for the guys. This is kind of like the quiet TV room. <laughs> TV room? Yeah. This is more like a movie theater room. Well, you got to remember, there's 13 guys here. Okay. Uh, so, and, and big events, Super Bowl, uh, World Series, things like that, right. where the guys in the evening, as soon as, as soon as these guys get done eating, they're cleaning this firehouse. And as soon as that firehouse is clean and they're done for the night, it's time to relax and, and take a few sure. minutes for yourself. Uh, and physical fitness isn't the only thing we're worrying about now we're worrying about mental mental health as well right uh, you know making sure these guys can unwind and just decompress for even 30 minutes at a time right makes a big difference right. you know yeah. they're just constantly being hounded and this, this is, is by far one of the biggest TV rooms we've ever seen oh yeah I absolutely. would call it more of it a theater room uh, yes. but uh, this is actually pretty cool to yeah. have uh, and the guys all voted for this the guys put in a house fund uh, so every two weeks uh, they pay into the house fund and the house fund buys things like TVs and recliners and coffee and all that stuff. So that's all paid for by the guys in the firehouse. Okay. Um, every station has their own house fund. Every guy is required every week to put money into the house fund. That helps pay for all that stuff because obviously this would be considered a frivolous expense if this was taxpayer dollars. Right. So we can't do that. But this, the guys at the station sure can put in because for them this is this, this is their is, home. This is their home. Yeah. This is the home number two. Right. Uh, most people don't realize, you know, if you're working an eight to five job, you're spending, you know, about eight hours with your family every day. These guys are spending less than that because when they get home, their family's leaving and going to work. Right. Their wife's going, leaving and going to work. Right. So they're they're missing out on a lot of that stuff being here 24 hours a day. And if they work overtime, they're just adding more on to it. Right. So having a place where they can relax, uh, having a place where they can be mentally and physically alert and ready to go, you know. And having a firm that built this station, like we're kind of bouncing back a little bit yeah. to incorporate, you know, a tiered system, can incorporate a room like this. Exactly. Uh, it's very important to, yeah. to think about that before you start building. Yeah, we weren't even sure this could would fit into the footprint, right. honestly. Uh, that it kind of got squeezed in at the last minute uh, and they did a great job and it's completely sealed off. I mean, if there's no sound in here uh, at all except the TV. Right. Uh, and the only time you know anything's going on is when a run, when a run drops. Right. And that's the only, that's, other than that, this is a super quiet place. All right, so making our way back out, I forgot to mention something. These glass windows are here for a purpose. They're not right. just there so you can show off your, your right. nice equipment. Yeah. They're here for safety? Yeah, yeah, so I mean, these guys are working out hard. They're, they're always, they're, when they're working out, they're trying to reach their limit. If a guy has a problem, if a guy has chest pains or difficulty breathing or whatever, somebody is always walking. Right. Uh, we have we have emergency buttons in there so they can hit an emergency button, but if a guy just look, can look in and see if somebody's on the ground, we've got a problem, and they can just dart right in there and start. Yeah, yeah. Problem, so, so building stations, we've been to a couple different stations that have some weight rooms. They're, you know, the old closet converted to a weight room oh, or yeah, something like yeah. that. You know, <laughs> we've all been there. Yeah. Uh, but when you're starting to think of building more 
firehouses or redoing firehouses. Those are the kind of things that you need to think about before. Yeah. Almost have foresight yeah, in you, regards to that health. Yeah, and you have to design it in. You have to have somebody design fitness into the daily life. Fitness wasn't for a long time. Fitness wasn't considered to be a part of the firefighters' duty. Right. Um, it's part of our duty. It's, it's our duty to be in the best shape that we have and uh, that we can be in, and to be always ready to go. So having that way that weight room engineered the way it is down off you know put it in this in this position where a guy coming out of the bathroom is going to see what's going on in there or a guy coming out of his bunk room is going to see what's going on in there and just having it be a focal point of the firehouse right and, you know and make it a part it's part of our lives okay it's what we do every day what's this hallway uh so this is the engine and medic hallway so okay. all of the the engine guys and the medic guys are all sleeping in here it's also where most of the bathrooms are so um every like we talked about earlier, every guy has his own bunk room. Every guy has a place to, to put his stuff. Um, and then we, we put two guys per bathroom. So you're sharing a bathroom with one guy, okay. but it's your bathroom. You can throw your stuff out and, and, and strew it all out everywhere and you know where it is. And everybody's just kind of uh, nice. doing that together. So. Yeah, yeah. Right behind us, we're going to go down to the yeah. apparatus bay. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Let's yeah, let's do that. So coming down off the second floor from the bunk room area, we're coming into the apparatus bay. But right off the side here is your gear room, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, this station is one of the first is the first one we have. Uh, all of our gear is isolated. Uh, this room was built to be completely detached from the living area upstairs. All of our gear is isolated in this room. We can dry it out as soon as as soon as we get back in with dirty gear it goes in here right. and everybody stores their stuff here right so having an architectural firm that you know when you built the station back in 2011 2012 understands that these things are coming they're keeping yep. an eye on those nfpa regulations right. you know what it's every five ten years they change their regulations yeah, yeah. And, they're, and they're always looking at new things and so not only do you need to know have a firm that knows the current regulations but they also need to be watching the trends right the trends are are evident and you got to watch them and you got to be ready to react uh, having this station built the way it was means we're not changing it all the time yeah. we're not compensating we're not always backpedaling to fix something or make something the right way is ready to go when we moved in right yeah that's but awesome to have it's a separate you keep everything out of the way yep. all those carcinogens stay down as we make our way around the bottom here, uh, this is where your physical fitness kind of area, besides the gym, they guys work out. Right, yeah, so the two different kinds of workouts, there's weightlifting and conditioning, and then this is uh, actually like firefighting workouts. So they're full gear, wearing an air pack, breathing air, because we can fill our bottles right here. So they're able to, to set up a workout and the guys run through it together, deck of cards or uh, we're different stations or suicide stairs or whatever you want to do. And now, uh, so talk about stairs, this stair, well, but yeah. when we were walking up the other one, I noticed they had the stairs going up the yeah, other side. And it, it's just basically a dead end. It goes to the roof for the maintenance guys to get to all of the equipment that's on the roof. But the guys definitely took that over for a stair workout because it just adds another level right. before you have to keep turning around. Right. So, what else do we have back here? Most of the stuff is maintenance equipment and cleaning equipment. We've got our uh, gear washer, we got our SCBA filling station, and, and uh, hose dryer basically is all that's back here. Okay, and each of your guys get two sets of gear? Two sets of gear, two, uh, two of everything except helmets basically. If they want to buy an extra helmet, they can, but everything else they have two sets of. Okay. All right, so let's talk about what you have here in the apparatus bay. Right in the back here, you have a couple of... Uh, Inflatables? Yep, we have a couple of inflatable boats. We do uh, surface water rescue, uh, and then we, rec we we rely on Indianapolis and Pike Township for dive rescue. Okay. Uh, just because of the cost, it's, uh, it's it makes more sense for us. And the boats are pulled by the TSU here. The TSU has uh, some of our heavy rescue equipment. It has tons of SCBA bottles. Uh, and then they, uh, they also have one of our drones uh, that we use to fly equipment out to maybe somebody trapped in the water or whatever. Okay. Uh, we can drop a life jacket on them or we can take a radio out a, a big distance or whatever. All that's done so from So TSU stands for Tactical Support Unit? Yep. Okay. Yep. And that's a Ford F550, what yeah. year? Uh, this is a 2016. Okay, right next to that we have? Ladder 82. Ladder 82 is our oldest uh, of our front line, like our main trucks. Okay. Uh, Ladder 82 is just a little over two years old. Smeal, Smeal ladder truck built on a Spartan chassis and it's 75 feet tall, no pump. Uh, we don't put pumps on ladder trucks uh, because we have an engine that's kind of dedicated to them at every run. They're always ready to 
supply water and get water. And to you them. have hydrants pretty much everywhere. Oh yeah, we have we have hydrants uh, literally less than 800 feet from everywhere. Okay, so. I love the black over red. That's yeah. an awesome color. Yeah, scheme. we're moving to black over red. This one here, uh, this is Engine 82. There, it's their vehicle right now, but it's not their primary. Their primary was hit uh, about a year, a little over a year ago, almost totaled. Uh, in a T-bone accident. So this was actually their older rig when we were white over red. Okay. Uh, these were our sea graves. So we had a matching sea graves at the time and now we have matching smeals. So all the trucks are, are, look, are gonna look just like this. Okay. This one here, hopefully in the next day or so, we're gonna get it back. It's actually at our maintenance shop with a couple of issues that they gotta fix before they can mark it in service, so. How much water does it carry? Uh, all of our engines hold a minimum of 500 gallons with uh, with uh, 1,500 gallon minimum pumps. Almost all of them are 2,000 gallon minimum pumps. Okay, and this is the medic unit that you run? Yep, so we have four of these Ford F450s, I believe. Okay. And the, the cool thing about these is we just keep reusing the boxes. Oh, you just so, rechassis them? Yeah, we yeah. rechassis them. Uh, this one, uh, this is actually a spare right now. Uh, their truck ju is brand new okay. um, and it's uh, Again, just a rechassis from their old one. So they're running in a spare right now while they're, I think they're just getting service okay. today. Where do you store the other ones? You said you have four. Uh, we have one in all, uh, at four of the five firehouses. Oh, okay. So each, each station has a medic truck inside it, except for one. And, and we're actually getting ready to add another ambulance and that'll, all five stations will have an ambulance built into their uh, in, into their response. And the last vehicle in there is? Battalion 80. Battalion is the uh, shift commander, battalion chief for the department. He runs the shift every day. This is his vehicle with his XO. Uh, they go on every major call, running in an F-150 pickup truck with a separate camper shell to keep the gear outside of the truck. So okay. everything's uh, everything's kept away from the, uh, the guys riding in the front. It's a good looking truck. It is a good looking truck. Last but not least, I want to talk about these doors. These doors are huge and they're the bifold doors. Yes, uh, first, uh, the only station we have uh, with these doors. These doors are really, really cool. Um, open super quick. Um, I'll hit the button for you and you can see uh, what's going on. We're used to about a 30 to 45 second door opening. Uh, so. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. <laughs> and if you notice, there's no motor noise, there's no gear driving or anything like that. Right. The battalion chief sleeps right behind his vehicle. That ambulance goes out multiple times a night. Yeah. They never hear yeah. the door open anymore. You used to be able to hear that vibration right. and wake you up. So, right, right. Yeah. And you got plenty of height too. You know, even though it's oh, a bifold yeah. door, you're not worried about you know, the taller trucks or a ladder going out. Oh yeah, and absolutely it not. In. Yeah, this thing can house anything. So it's it's kind of nice. So, and they look nice from the street. They do, they look, they look great from the street. So, once again, this is Heroes Next Door, Station Cribs. We are down in Wayne Township. We're working with Chief Rice here and uh, he just took us around. Thank you very much for inviting us out. Anytime. If any Anytime. of our viewers are interested in becoming a, a firefighter with you, how would they get a hold of you? Uh, go to our website, waynefire.org. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook or uh, Instagram or Twitter. Uh, we post all of our hirings on our on our webpage, and you can actually begin the hiring process on the webpage. So we will definitely give you plenty of notice and give you a chance to get here. All right. Once again, here is next door, Station Cribs. Do us a favor, hit that subscribe, hit that notification, so we can keep bringing you more. We want to hit that fifty thousand mark in just a couple of months.